Hey, good afternoon, more Medic One. Today we're going to talk about engine compression and why a small engine lacks compression or doesn't have any compression at all. What I'm going to do though is I'm going to spend a little bit of time this morning. I'm going to make everybody a playlist of all the videos that I've done about compression issues. I should have done this a long time ago, but the number one cause in my experience in doing this all these years valve issues whether it be an L head or a overhead valve number one cause of no compression or low compression are stupid simple engine valves now <laughs> it's obvious that this valve does not fit this cylinder head look how big it is this is actually out of a small block Chevy but I just wanted to use a bigger valve so I could kind of get more of it on camera um, normally what happens is whenever the engine is running this sealing surface and this sealing surface is what seals when this engine is running and these valves are going up and down from the camshaft pushing on the end of the valve stem everything's nice and kosher you have your five to eight thousandths of uh, tap it gap here or your lash what happens is the valve face itself can wear down it can actually get cupped you can wear your valve the head the seat can be worn down and that can cause a gap between the sealing surfaces what happens whenever this surface here goes away your valve is going to actually push deeper into the cylinder head which is going to decrease your valve lash so what happens when that happens that means your valve is not going to close what happens then is when you have let's just say for instance you have a half a thou gap between the valve face and the valve seat that compression is going to seep right past the valve right into your muffler or your intake it's not as common to see these sort of issues on an overhead valve engine because they're so much easier just to pop the, the valve cover off and set your lash now on an older L head engine if you pop the head off and you see that valve sitting there and you can take your thumb and you can just twist that valve in its bore, then you know you have an issue of having some valve stretch. You have some face wear. If the lash is completely gone and you're actually pushing the, or the valve is just worn to where you have zero lash and it's not sealing seating or sealing on the cylinder head now it's hard to tell on this particular cylinder head but these uh, valve seats have just been pounded you can see where the seat is actually below the surface of the head you see this ridge here that's where the valve was actually contacting the cylinder head so the valve seat on this engine they have it's just been completely battered and I basically had to replace the cylinder head on this particular engine valve stretch however is the most common failure on these valves the number one cause is improper carburetor adjustments causing the fuel to air ratio to be super lean and whenever these engines are under you know a heavy load you can't just tell by ear whether that engine's running lean or not because there's so much load that the engine doesn't care it just wants to it's just it just wants to run and when it's lean this exhaust valve is glowing cherry red buddy and uh, another way that will cause these valves to overheat and stretch is ignition timing if you have a sheared flywheel key it'll just wreak havoc on these valves Reason number two that a small engine will have low compression 
or no compression will be the head gasket. Now, on a V-twin, you won't have this scenario, but on an, uh, a twin engine like this, if the gasket blows in between the cylinders, then you're gonna have low compression on both cylinders. However, if the head gasket blows in the oil galley, say like from here to here, you're gonna get uh, combustion pressure gases and it's gonna fill your crankcase with you know, exhaust gases and you'll overpressure the crankcase. It'll start blowing oil out and using tons of oil because it'll actually be sucking oil on the intake stroke back into the engine through that failed head gasket. On four strokes as it is two strokes, one of the reasons that an engine will have a low compression is going to be either, you know, broke rings, stuck rings, scored cylinder walls. On this particular engine, we've got severe scoring and the piston ring is just dirt ingestion worn. That is razor sharp right there. Most two cycles don't have a head gasket. The cylinder and piston, or the cylinder and head, are machined in one piece. The steel four mix engines with the valves in the head, those are super bad about losing compression. And just one little old chunk of carbon, no bigger than a pinhead, gets underneath of the valve and causes the valve to stay open, which causes no compression. Lastly, and probably the least common reason that an engine lacks compression is going to be a completely stopped up air filter. If you were to put your hand or a thumb over the intake of an engine, hook your compression tester up, whether it be a two stroke or a four stroke, and you block the intake off and you pull it over or you crank the key and turn it over, you're not gonna be building any compression because you have no air getting to the engine. I've just been brainstorming about topics that's been going on in the small engine forums and things like that. And I uh, I, I wanna address some issues with you guys. Like I said, I'm, before I post this video in the links below, go and click that uh, playlist. It'll have all the videos that I've had over the past 11 years that have to deal with compression. I've actually had engine seats, the valve seats come off and just sitting there dangling on the valve. It's crazy what I've seen over the years. So I'm hope that uh, you guys click on that playlist and uh, have fun with that. Anyway, guys, we'll see you guys on the next one and have a great day. Mower Medic One.